Well, another tremendous crowd here today. Um, it's just great to have our fans here and supporting the guys, uh, just an outstanding atmosphere. And you could certainly feel the crowd today in all those big moments. And we certainly had a lot of them throughout the course of the game, just a back and forth game. Um, very well played game, I felt like on both sides. Um, again, we did a good job. Um, and we squared some balls up, had some tough luck. Billy Amick uh, got robbed of a home run early in the ball game. And, Caden hit a ball pretty hard, you know, over the right fielder's head. He made a nice play, and Blake Wright smoked the ball to center field early in the game. And uh, But I thought we did a good job against some tough arms today, um, again, of winning that free 90 battle. You know, we took our walks, put ourselves in a position to score some runs, and, um, you know, it wasn't necessarily always pretty, but it was a very hard-fought game. It was great to see uh, Briar Hawkins come up there with just a huge at-bat, you know, to win the game for us. Uh, and our pitching staff, uh, you know, you look at, you know, <clears throat> Lindley and uh, Ryan Ammon struggled a little bit, but got stepped up behind him. I thought, I thought the, the key in the game, quite honestly, was, was Owen Chuck and Jay Deal. You know, Jay Deal, just unbelievable uh, to be a freshman, pitch, pitching on short rest, pitch yesterday, uh, just in high leverage situations for him to be able to pitch the way that he did. Uh, says a lot about him, and, and Caden did an outstanding job coming in for, you know, his – his first outing of the year. So I thought that was the difference in the game. Uh, with the game being tied like that um, and, and us having the last at bat, we had to keep it tied and our bullpen was going to have to do a great job. And, you know, those guys at the end, uh, you know, Olin, Chuck, Dill, and Grice, they were they were just outstanding. And uh, it was just a great way to win the game, walk off, walk off fashion, extra innings. That's good for your club. Uh, you know, it's going to give them confidence going into those situations, uh, you know, as we move forward. So it's great to have a game like that. Lonnie, how, how for, far as the weekend overall to, to start off with the sweep? How big is that for you guys? Yeah, it's huge for us. I mean, there's no doubt about it. And there's a lot of things that we that we learned about our club. Uh, you know, we still got some questions to answer. Um, and uh, we need to get better in, uh, you know, some areas for sure. I'd like to see our starting pitchers, obviously, the last two days. We need to get a little deeper into the ball game. Um, I'm not, you know, as concerned about getting hit as I am. We we got to be able to make some pitches with runners on base and get a little deeper in the game from the starting pitching side. But I think the one thing that you that, that, that you saw today and yesterday was our ability to to use our bullpen and our guys. Uh, we have several guys uh, that are built to start. You know, Gilbert can start. Jay Deal's been built to start. Jackson Lindley's been built to start. Olin Chuck has started. Grice has started. Uh, so, you know, those guys can go long. We can stretch those guys out and, and get them a time through the lineup if needed. So that certainly helps when you're able uh, to go to those guys early in the game if, if your starter struggles. You used Alex Edmondson early in the game. What went into, into that decision? Yeah, the decision was very simple. Uh, you know, that was, the, that was the high leverage situation of the game. I mean, if you look at it right there, uh, you know, we are up by one run at the time. Uh, two out wall, and then, uh, you know, next thing you know, they had lefty, righty, lefty coming up. So we felt like, and, and that's their best hitters, two, three, four. We felt like right then and there, we needed to go to Ammons uh, to hold them. We had not used him yet. Uh, so we wanted to go to Ammons in that situation. He struggled a little bit. And obviously, once we got to the right-hander, we needed a punch out. And uh, we went with Eddie, and unfortunately, Eddie walked a runner in, but then he punched a guy out. So, uh, you know, the bottom line is, is, you know, we felt like, um, with those guys coming up and knowing what they had in the pen, that that was the leverage situation that we needed to shut them down right then and there. And that's what that that's what kind of led to why you put Caden in there in the in the tent. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, if it would have went as planned, mm -hmm. uh, we would not have walked the leadoff guy. That that's what killed the inning for us right there. Had we been able to finish that inning right then and there we would have been able to bring Ammons in on a clean inning in the seventh. And that was our plan uh, because their two-hole and four-hole guys were left-handed. We wanted to bring Ammons in for the seventh with a one-run lead and get through their better, their best hitters then and there um, and then go to Eddie. That was kind of the plan, uh, but it didn't work out once we, uh, you know, got the, the two-out walk. You know, then we had to bring Ammons in in the sixth. And, uh, you know, we just, just got to do a better job. And, you know, we had a tough play at shortstop that could have went either way there. Uh, but, uh, you know, the free 90 again, I mean, that's that's the name of the game. If, if you win the free 90 battle, you, you're going to win the game. And that was the one inning where, uh, you know, we, we helped them with the free 90. How hard is it for, for a guy like Caden to keep his head in the game where 
you know, because you guys are going to use them that way sometimes when you have to pull him in to pitch to kind of help you out when you get in a situation to keep his head in the game and be ready to go when his numbers call for that. Honestly, I think it's 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 good for us not to let him know. <laughs> Honestly, I think it works better for him when he just is an athlete. Uh -huh. And he, I think he will tell you that. The main thing is, is just, you know, we just tell him, hey, make sure your arm is good and loose. Like he went down in between innings and threw a little bit. And, you know, he kind of throws with a pitcher's delivery in right field when he's warming up in between innings later in the game with the anticipation that he might come in the game. It's more about just making sure his arm is ready. But I think he actually is, is better when you just kind of tell him right then and there. Literally, he was at third base to end the inning. And as he's coming off the field, I ran out there to ask him. I was like, hey, are you ready to go if we bring any games? He's like, yeah, I'm good. Let's go. So I think it works better when he doesn't know when he's going to pitch until that moment. Overall, Money, I guess, what did you learn about your team this weekend? I thought we played outstanding defense. Um, I thought we did a great job of filling up the strike zone. Again, we had the one inning. Honestly, out of, you know, you look at the weekend, 28 innings of baseball, we really only had one inning where we struggled to throw strikes. I'll take that. So we, we forced the other team to swing the bat to beat us, and uh, I'll take that. I thought we played great defensively. I thought our bullpen was phenomenal. Uh, you know, and, and we took our walks. You know, we took what they gave us, uh, to, and, and, and we were able to score a, a decent amount of runs uh, by doing that. And, you know, today, the, probably the, the thing that I'm most proud of today is we were able to win one of those games in the balance. You know, one of those games that could have went either way. We were able to win that game, and I think that says a lot about our club and is something that we need to build upon. Winning the game 5-4, you know, oftentimes those are the games that can go either way, and, and we were able to win the game. There's been a lot of talk about the whatever the pitch calling devices are that you yeah. guys are wearing this year. Yeah. What yeah, I'll explain called? it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So basically, in college baseball, uh, sign stealing is rampant. I mean, it's absolutely rampant. And it's because everybody has the same video system. So we all use a, a video system called called Synergy. And, and so basically, you can see the catcher, the catcher, it, it's the center field camera view on everybody. So everybody can just sit there and study your catcher's signs. So when you have runners on second base, a lot of times guys can just decode what signs if you don't have some sort of system where there's no signs being put on. So that's why you're seeing all of these wristbands and all these different things. Uh, it's, it's, it's not easy for me, quite honestly. I'm more of a baseball purist when it comes to that stuff. But I will tell you this, if you, if you don't use something like that with runners on second base, um, you better have a lot of different sets of signs because your signs, your signs are going to get stolen. And then all you got to do when you get runners on second base is just verbal what pitch is coming in. So it, it, it basically puts your pitchers at a huge disadvantage if they don't use it. Yeah, uh, and I was going to say, as um, far as if a pitcher wants to wave off the pitch, he doesn't like it. Because, How does that work? How does that work? Yeah, so like if he waves the pitch off, then we would just put the sign on. Okay. You know, just because we wouldn't necessarily have time. But the great thing about the little system that we use is we literally just punch in the pitch, and he just looks down at his wristband, and he knows exactly what to throw. That way there's no cross-ups either. Right. So we're, we, we radio in to the catcher what pitch is coming, and then we, we plug the sign in. He looks at it, and there's no signs being given between the catcher and the pitcher, and there's no confusion as to what's being what he's going to throw so they don't get crossed up. Okay. So who all wearing those? Because I know, like, Vanderbilt, everybody on the field wear them. Well, now, see, we do not use them for signs on offense. Gotcha. Um, now, I think, and I'm just assuming here, um, I think what Vanderbilt and some schools are doing that, that wear them all over the field, and it makes sense. Look, if let's say you're throwing a curveball, well, your infielders are probably, as that pitcher starting his delivery, going to shift more to the pull side of the field because breaking balls are going to be pulled more. Right. Whereas if it's a fastball, once the pitcher starts his delivery, they're probably going to hold their position a little bit more. So I think a lot of it helps the infielders when, and maybe the outfielders. I don't know if they're doing it too, but I haven't studied what they're doing. But uh, a lot of it just has to do with positioning based on the pitch that's, that's coming in. Do they have a name? Because people are calling them beepers and like yeah, all sorts of yeah. Stuff. It, it, they're just. It's, I, I don't know what it's called. Okay. You know, quite honestly, <laughs> it looks like my third grade calculator. So that's what I tell <laughs> our guys. I mean, it's a little blue thing with a bunch of buttons. It looks like the calculator I got in third grade. So. That's what I call it, the third grade calculator. <laughs> Anything else? But he had a couple different lineups this weekend. Yeah. Or, or do you like everyone? Or yeah. 
Yeah, you know, look, it's it's tough, and we talked about this before the season started with the guys, that there's going to be days where the guys are probably wondering a little bit why, right, as far as why are we playing, you know, some different combinations. And honestly, um, it's just me trying to get guys in positions to be successful on the field based on the matchup, and I want to see what they can do. Uh, you know, we've got what we feel like is a pretty steady six guys that are going to be in that lineup every day. And then we have three spots that we want to try some different platoons like Wagner and Brock. If we're, you know, depending upon who's pitching, we'll play JD or we'll play Wagner. Um, you know, we played Corbett a good bit this weekend. He's a good hitter. I wanted to play Billy Amick again because he's got serious power. And you can see it versus Fab. I mean, they robbed him of a home run. He's a threat to hit the ball out of the ballpark. So. Uh, you know, we just wanted to try different combinations of guys and get as many guys on the field as possible because we want to learn as much as we can by the time we get into week three and week four. You know, we want to know as much as, as we can about our club. So um, I look at it as a benefit. Look, we won three games and we played a lot of guys, which is, which is good for our club. And now as we move forward, those guys have been in games. So when they're coming off the bench or they get a start, they're comfortable, you know. They're they're a little bit more at ease in the in in the face of competition. Is there anyone that stood out, I guess, in that defensive that lineup? Well, I thought they all did great things. Look, I mean, you, you look at Wagner, you know, Max, uh, you know, hit a big home run. He played outstanding defense at third base. Uh, J.D. Brock had some huge walks to get on base for us. He scored in some in some big situations, and he's he's arguably our best defensive outfielder. So he, he brings that, you know, piece to the game. Um, so uh, Corbett, you know, had a, a huge walk with the bases loaded today. He's a scrappy, hard-nosed player. He's a good hitter, too. He's going to be in the mix. Uh, so, uh, you know, Frenchie caught game one. Engel caught two games. I mean, I think we all see what we were talking about with Cooper Engel. I mean, he's just a really, really good player and a really good hitter. So that was pretty much – you know, the platoons for us for this weekend. But, you know, the guys that got in the game did a great job. And Billy Amick, you know, again, he, he drilled a baseball today. And a lot of days, if he gets just a little bit of wind, that ball's gone. Uh, or, a, you know, a center fielder that, you know, can't quite, you know, jump that high. So, but all in all, it was great. And we pitched a lot of guys. So it was good to see uh, so many guys have some success on the mound. All right. Thank you, Coach. Yep. Thanks, Coach.